Hello there, it's Alana. I'm back to keep helping you with project number one. So we left off here. We had created, let's see, a lovely spreadsheet that was titled Mortality. We had copied and pasted all our data in for infant mortality and life expectancy. We had gotten rid of all the countries that didn't have both numbers in them. And we made sure that all the countries aligned and all that good stuff. Okay. Oops, I missed a couple. Look at that. Doo -doo. Okay. So the one thing I wanted to tell you is that once you get these so that they're um, in alignment like this and all the excess ones that have nothing in them are gone, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to delete column C and D. Now you don't have to. If you know about Excel a little bit you can get around this, but for novices like most of you probably are, it's better just to make it go away. But you want to make sure that you double check that everything was good. Okay, So you go up here and click delete. So I highlighted the, the blank column and the D column and I right click and I delete it. And now it's just one data set like that. That's the easiest way for making a scatter plot, which I'm about to do. So how do you make a scatter plot? Well, I'm not going to show you in that data set. Haha, -ha, I mean. I'm going to show you with my lovely, lovely cartoon characters. Okay, so once your your data set is together in two columns like this, what you can do is you can highlight, click and scroll down to the from the top left to the bottom right. That's called highlighting because it turns all the cells blue. And then you go to insert, scatter, see, scatter. And the reason you got rid of those middle columns is it doesn't make the scattergram very well if you um, don't have them right next to each other. Now, there's ways around that but it's just easier just to do it like this. Okay, So scatter. Now I'm going to delete that legend. I don't need that. I'm going to put in a title. So this would be um, height versus arm span of cartoon characters. I'm just making stuff up. Okay. All right. And then you would go over here to access titles, you would enter a horizontal access title like this would be height in inches. Right, that would be my unit, so your problem has whatever unit you've got. If only you had a place to find that, I like the about um, area, yes? Okay, so the about tabs. And this would be arm span. And again, this was in inches. You wouldn't know that, but it was. And don't ask me how I know the height of Foghorn Langhorn in inches. I just made it up. Okay, so then You've got your titles, right? So you've got your titles here with your units and your titles here with your units, if units are appropriate for your um, data set, which most likely it is. And then you've got a title up here, whatever is appropriate for you. Okay, so that's how to make a scatter plot. So you delete those that interior portion. So you're going to want to do that for your data. Delete the, the extra countries in that extra blank column. Don't leave them in there. Get it so they're right next to each other, and then you scroll down, highlight all of it, insert. Okay. Okay, so... and by the way, uh, that let's just leave it at that. So then it said to do what else? Make a scattergram, be sure to label it, good. Include the regression line and the R squared value. Hmm, okay. So what you can do is you can click on your points. See how all the points are highlighted? You right click, add trend line, and it's going to ask you what kind of trend line do you want? Well, you want a linear line. Right. Then down here, display the equation and display the R squared value. Close. And you can kind of move that label around. You can make it bold. You can make it a larger font if you so choose. And if you want to play around with the, f the coloring, if you don't like blue, that's really easy to do. Just go over here to design. That's where it is. And let's say I want orange. You know, there you go. You could actually click on each dot and make them their own color if it really made you excited. <laughs> so you can, you know, marker fill, and I want to make it a red dot, and so be it. There it is, it's a red dot. Okay? So if you want to play around in there, you can. Um, I imagine you're fine with just, you know, the regular pull down menu of options. All right, so we've made a scatter plan, scattergram, we've inserted the equation in the R squared. Then you have a whole bunch of stuff that has to get answered. Um, by hand with Excel, sorry. So you're going to have to type a whole bunch of answers. A few of these you're going to have to actually calculate. As a matter of fact, one of these you're going to have to calculate. So suffice it to say, it's the same problem that you had before in that you can either type, you know, 
So you'd say part three, you know, mortality analysis. Bold. And you go, oh, I don't like that it's doing that. So by the way, if, if, if you find that it's all trying to fit into one cell, that's usually meaning that the wrap text thing is highlighted. So if I click on it, it makes it so that it bleeds over into other cells, which is usually more the way you want it when you're typing things. So number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, etc., 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 blah, 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 blah. Okay? So you can do it that way, or you can go to insert a text box. Again, make a large text box, part three, mortality analysis. Right, one, two, blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah is not a word I write very often. <laughs> okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so you could either do a text box or you could do this. There's, I think, one thing you have to calculate with a square root function, so equals SQRT. So that's not hard to do. You know, type your number, you know, 75 or whatever. And there you go. Okay, so that's the one thing that you have to calculate. Let me go back here and make sure everything's good. Oops, I meant that was part four. <laughs> Sorry about that. So, hold on. Part four, part four. Part three was the graphs, part four is the analysis. Oh, and if there's anything else you have to calculate, if you would normally pull out a calculator, you can just use this. Like, suppose I had to do two times 3.5 plus 128. Enter, and it does it. So you can find anything you need with Excel. So I think there are a couple things that you have to do in this analysis piece that you have to do that with. And then the rest of it's all just typing. So if you want to do those pieces just in a couple cells and then have the typing somewhere else, like if I put this, you know, let's say this was for number five, I could put it right there in cell number five and type my answer. Yada, 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 right? And again, it's doing that merge text, or that wrap text thing. So if I just click on wrap text, it stops doing that. And you can actually do it for a whole bunch of cells. So if I click on all of them and click wrap text, then it's unhighlighted and it won't wrap the text anymore. So that's just a, or if it bothers you, you can just do the text box. I personally like the text box a lot. Alrighty, I think we're good. So then you'll save, right? And you'll have all of your analysis. Oops, this will be a little bit lower, honestly, because you're going to have a graph in here. So you're going to have your graph piece up here, and then all of this piece will be further down to make space for your graph. Okay? All right. So then you'll have a GDP. You'll have all your parts with that, right? So you'll have graphs, you'll have tables, you'll have calculations, and you'll have your analysis piece. Then you're going to have about GDP. You'll have your mortality. And then you're about mortality and about life expectancy. And those have the units and things that might help you when, for your interpretation analysis piece. What they are, what they mean, that kind of thing. And then the footnotes and settings don't really mean much to you. You can just leave them there. Okay, so you'll save one final time when it's all done. And then you'll close it down. And then you'll email yourself as an attachment. So let me show you how to do that. So I'm just going to close this. Yes, sure, why not? I'll save it. And then I can close this. I don't need to save this anymore. If ever you really mess up, you can always go back to Gapminder and re-download the data and restart over. I mean, it's not that bad. You just have to kind of copy and paste the data into your spreadsheet. So if, if you find yourself really messing up, that's one way to kind of fix everything. Okay, so let me open up my Excel, or, or excuse me, my, my email program. Hold on. Okay, so this is Gmail where I did this, which is nice. Hold on. Oops. Come back. There it is. Okay. So I'm going to make it bigger. There we go. So I could type to my instructor, right? So instructor at, you know, jccmi.edu or whatever their their email. So mine is, you know, Tucky Alana J at jccmi.edu. That's me. Okay. Or whatever your instructor's email address is. Okay. And then you could say project one from, you know, I don't know what your name is. So Annie Smith or so on. Okay. Okay, so then you can say, all right, here's my project. Smiley face or whatever you like. And then what you want to look for in your email program is a little paper clip. That means you're going to attach a file. So click 
that and then you're going to go find your file. So I saved it to the desktop. So let's say Project One Smith, there it is. And it takes it a minute and then it finishes uploading and then it's ready to go. Okay, so wherever your project is, if you saved it in your documents folder, you saved it on your desktop, you saved it wherever, that's where um, you'll go to find it. And then you want to attach it and then send it. And that's as simple as that. All right. Let's see here. And of course, different mail programs all work slightly differently, so just keep that in mind. I mean, um, I just showed you Gmail, but you want to look for a paperclip wherever your program is. That's kind of the standard um, attachment feature. All right, I think we're done. So I hope this was helpful and that um, you do very well on your project, as you should, and that you find that it's really useful and interesting to apply what you've learned to some rather large, ugly, real-life data sets and see what they show you about the world and how the world works. So I'll see you back here for videos for Project 2 later in the semester or the year. See you then.